Hey folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. This is Bob Desmond. It's a beautiful day here in Huntington, New York. I'm on the deck today. Can't wait to go in the pool in a little while, start at the barbecue. But before I do that, I wanted to go to our Best Stock Charts for the coming week. Before I do them, I want to remind everyone tomorrow night, Sunday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be live. As always, Sunday Night Futures Live, please join us. That's where we do a pulse check of, of how the week appears to be opening up. We'll take some requests from members first and then from audience members with regard to stocks that they're watching and they want me to review live and on video. I'm also going to uh, do a review, I believe tomorrow, maybe later today, but tomorrow definitely, of a really great trade that we had yesterday using TrendSpider. It really helped out. TrendSpider is like my spell check for technical analysis. And we traded UGAZ, which is the leveraged ETF, putting you long of natural gas. And we traded that yesterday, a rare day trade that we did, which was the 29th. And we booked a little over 11% profit on that trade. Again, I'll go over that trade tomorrow, being Sunday, maybe today. Okay, let's... Um, We'll come back to UGAZ. I'll just go over it quickly. Uh, we saw a sell-off yesterday in the morning, and I used the annotated version of trend lines on TrendSpider that I added to identify where there was probable support below. But ultimately, what kept me from stopping out were the automated trend lines on TrendSpider. And as you can see here, we bounced off of one of those trend lines on a 15-minute chart I'll go over in more of a greater deep dive tomorrow about UGAZ and the trade that we did. But very nice, great. This is a great tool, folks. You need to have it in your toolbox, even if you're using other charting software as I do. I'll always use different uh, charting softwares to validate what I'm seeing on one. But you have to have TrendSpider because, as I said before, it's like your, your spell check for technical analysis. So, and as a matter of fact, they're having a special. If you're watching this today, look down below this video. And even if you're watching this on the website, just come over here, click this link here. We're an affiliate and it helps support the channel. And they normally give a 25% off discount, but today is the final day of their 35% off sale. So jump on it really, really quick. And with that, let's go to our best stock charts for the coming week. Okay, the first stock up is going to be Fiverr. And before we get into the analysis of the symbols we're going to go over now, on the, in the members area, if you remember, I've already done the week ahead commentary where we review the performance of the market last week, what I believe is going to happen this coming week. We also review our positions that we're currently holding, and we had a really good week last week. And I review in great detail, meaning monthly, weekly, daily, and perhaps even intraday charts, the symbols I'm about to go over. So go to the members area, check it out. If you're not currently a member, 14-day free trial offer, go check it out in great detail. And we'll do a, an overview using weekly charts of the symbols that we're watching right now. And first up is going to be Fiverr. Last week, we did a bullish key reversal on Fiverr. And you could see that what happened was that we pulled back and reversed off of support. Now what we're looking for this coming week is a continuation rally up and through resistance, and that'll take us off to new all-time highs. The beautiful part about this setup is that once you hit all-time highs, you have no overhead supply above. So that's one of the main things that makes this very, very attractive to me as a trade. Now, on the daily charts, I will say, and I, when I pulled this up on TrendSpider, I didn't pick it off on my other charting software, but TrendSpider picked it up. There is resistance above using the daily chart. Not major resistance, but something to keep an eye out, and members will talk about that more next week. The next chart up, Costco. This is probably my favorite chart going into the week. I'm going to take the automated trend lines off for a moment. And you can see that last week we bounced off of the lower band of support. We have been consolidating for several weeks now. But what occurred last week was that we broke out 
and above resistance. I think that we're heading up to 314 spot 14. So I talk about how we want to enter this trade with members on the week ahead commentary. So please take advantage of it. 14 day free trial offer. Go check it out. The week ahead commentary analysis. So Costco looking really good. And if we if and when we do break out to new all time highs, again, the same thing with Fiverr. You have no overhead supply above. So clear blue skies, no resistance. And that's a type of risk reward scenario you want to find yourself in where you have very little resistance above and a lot of upside potential. Moving on to our next chart, Cure. This is a leveraged ETF. So mind you, very, very volatile. But you could see that last week, this is a weekly chart again, as a reminder, we flashed a bullish key reversal. We engulfed the prior week's down week. This is a very bullish setup here. And when you take a look at resistance levels, we closed above resistance last week. Now, I discussed with members how we want to enter this trade, but I want to point out one thing before we leave this chart is that if and when we do make a continuation move higher week over week, note how the volume bars drop off dramatically. So that's bullish stuff. That means that while you do have overhead supply here, there's not a ton of it. So once we get through this resistance, again, clear blue skies. You see what we're doing here this week? We're looking for stocks that are, or ETFs that are approaching all-time highs where you have, if you're long, uh, a lot of upside potential and not a lot of friction, not a lot of resistance above. So again, last week, bullish key reversal bar, RSI broke out last week after putting in higher lows, Stokes hooking up higher lows again. So Cure looking very bullish as you proceed into the coming week. And if I didn't mention it, I'll repeat it again. If I did, we broke out last week, very nice price action. So Cure, one of our top picks. I went over this one last week, which is BOX. And it did continue higher last week. So from a risk reward perspective, I'm not loving it as much as the others that I just went over. And I'm not loving this as much as I did last week. However, there is an opportunity to get long of this stock using the daily charts. I discussed with members. So please, members, if you're watching, go check it out. Our trade entry point, if and when we get a pullback, we have a strategy in place. I will not chase the shares. We did close off the highs of the week last week, which is a little bit bearish for me. But net net, we did close above resistance. So were I long? Would I go selling? No. You can see that we pulled back. We did a retest of support last week. That's very bullish stuff. We had broken out the prior week. Last week, retest. Very bullish. RSI rising. Stokes are rising. So the shares remain attractive. However, again, the risk is higher than what it was last week. So just be forewarned. The next chart up is Fizz, National Beverage Corp. This is one I went over last week. Now, Trend Spider fired off an alert as we rallied through one hour resistance. And you can see I'm using a weekly chart. However, it shows me my alert on a one hour level on Trend Spider. It's a great tool. So uh, we did not chase it. I wanted to see the shares close above weekly resistance. It didn't happen. We did make a new weekly high. However, we were rejected on a weekly basis off of that resistance level. So what I'd want to do is, and this is what I discussed with members, I want to watch the daily chart. The daily chart still looks good, while the weekly chart, not so much. Uh, it, it, it closed up higher. However, we did not hold the gains on the week, and that's why I'm saying the weekly chart is not as bullish as what the daily chart looks like, because Friday was a really good day. So if you're interested in our commentary, go check it out on the members area. So this is a potential trade for the coming week. The next chart up, canopy growth, rough week last week. I discussed this one last week. This is a weekly chart. And we did get a new weekly high. However, we were, this is why you should never be chasing these stocks, especially when they remain in a downtrend. Because we did put in a new weekly high. We rallied up to one resistance level and then a second resistance level. And then we flashed a bearish key reversal, smashing down below the prior breakout point. Why am I still interested in the shares? Because 
I think that we could pull back and see a retest of support. And if we get a successful retest of support levels and we rally and flash a bullish key reversal bar, then we'll look to enter the trade. However, if we close down below support levels, again, we're going to avoid and we'll take it off our watch list. But I, I, I haven't ruled out a potential long trade of canopy growth despite the big surge last week. So this is why it pays. If you're going to trade off the weekly charts, wait until Friday. See how the, the shares are poised to close. And in this case here, if you would have waited until later in the week, you would have saved yourself a lot of money. So when you're using weekly charts, wait until at least Thursday. Okay, Increase your probability of success. The last chart up is gold gold last week put in a beautiful week a bullish key reversal bar and i think that in all probability we are going to be breaking out yet again you had yields which dropped at the back half of the week last week again you have uh the tips treasury inflation protected securities rallying they closed higher they're poised to break out you have the dollar drop, it broke down below support last week, and it's very close to breaking monthly support if we close down below it in June. The month of May is obviously over, we closed at support. If we break monthly support in June, you can expect to see gold surge. So we're very bullish on gold, we have a strategy for getting long of it, so go check out my commentary on the weekend commentary. And everybody enjoy the remainder of your weekend. Join us tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Sunday Night Futures Live. I'll talk to you there and be well.